Good afternoon, Antes. So this is your walkthrough of your test that you wrote last week. So question one, refer to the figure M, P, S, and T. So M, P, S, and T are all points on the circle with center O. And P, T is a diameter, which we can see because it's going past, this, it's going through the center. All right, and they'll tell us that M, P, M, T, M, S, and O, S are drawn. All right, so question one, determine the value of each of the following given reasons. So they want M2. All right, so they're looking for that angle. Now we know, or you should know, that there's a diameter PT, so that subtends 90 degrees at the circle. So that means that M1 plus M2 is equal to 90 degrees, and your reason is angles in semicircle. Then, we can then state, because you know that M1 is 53, that means that therefore M2 is equal to 37 degrees. Question 2, O1. So O1 is the angle at the center. All right, and you can see that O1 is subtended by arc PS. And M1 is also subtended by arc PS. So that means that O1 needs to be double M1. All right, so O1, this here's our statement. O1 is equal to twice M1. And the reason there is angle at center is twice the angle at circumference. All right, and now we know that M1 is equal to 53 degrees. So that means that angle O1, which is twice 53, must be 106 degrees. Question B, refer to the figure. AB is a chord of a circle with center O. OMP is perpendicular to AB, they've given us that, and M is a point on AB. AB is equal to 14 centimeters. They haven't given us that information on the diagram, so it's a good idea for you to just add that on. So we know that that's 14 centimeters, and they tell us MP is equal to 3 centimeters. Okay, so those are the two measurements that they give us. And they also tell us that OM, so from that point, the center, to point M is equal to X. If you write the information on your diagram, it helps you with the questions. Okay, and that also goes for every successive question in, in the problem, that as you do an answer and you finish that answer for that particular sub-question, write your answer your, or your values on the diagram so that you have them for the next questions. Okay, so question one, state the length of the radius in terms of X. So you see, because I've written the X there and the three centimeters there, and I can see that OP is a radius. That means the radius is X plus three. Question two, determine with reasons the numeric length of the radius of the circle. So numeric means that your answer can't have X's in it. All right, it has to be a absolute value answer. Okay, so a number. All right, so question two, let's start this. What a good idea for you to do is, is that you can see we've already got a triangle forming. So we know that this distance is X, that's given. And we know that this distance actually is 7, because you already know from the theorem 1 that if a line from the center cuts a chord in 2, or bisects that chord at an, or sorry, cuts it at a perpendicular or right angle, then it means it bisects that chord. So we know that because they've told us that AB is 14, it must mean that AM is equal to 7. Okay, so that's our starting point. We're going to state that AB or AM is equal to MB and that's equal to 7. And your reason there is your perpendicular line from center to chord. All right. And then once you've got that, fill that in also on your diagram. So we know that that's now 7 centimeters. And you can see this triangle that's now forming. So we've got OM, we've got MA. And we can now join this line and make that AO and then use that triangle and Pythag to get the value of X. Because that's what we need. Once we've got the value of X, then we can add X to 3 because here we've got X. Once we've got that value, we can add it to 3 and then we've got the value of the radius of the circle. All right. So in triangle, and you must name the triangle you're working with, OAM, we can state that OA squared, which is the hypotenuse, is equal to OM squared, which is the short side, the one they've given us is X, plus the other short side, which is AM squared, 
and your reason is Pythag. All right, and then you substitute accordingly. So OA, we don't know, okay? But if we look at OP, we can see that that's equal to OA, and OP is X plus 3. So that means OA must also be X plus 3 because it's a radius. So substitute your X plus 3 in, and then OM is given to us as X, so that'll be X squared, and AM is uh, given to us as 7, which we've just worked out previously in the question. Okay, so that'll be 7 squared. And then from there, you foil out. So we're going to foil the left-hand side, becomes x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals x squared plus 7 squared is 49. All right, you should be able to see that the two x squareds will cancel. So let's leave the 6x on the left-hand side and take the 9 over to the right-hand side. So 49 minus 9 is equal to 40. And therefore, x equals 20 over 3. It's 40 over 6. But that simplifies to 20 over 3. Okay, but now recall that the question asked for the radius of the circle. And if you look back at the diagram, we've actually only just worked out this distance, x. So to that, we need to add 3 to get the radius. Okay, so therefore, the radius will be 20 over 3 plus 3. Okay, and then you can use your calculator for that, and that gives you 29 over 3 centimeters question 2a you're given that f of x equals 3 over x minus 3 minus 3 okay so that's a hyperbola we know that it's a hyperbola because there's a variable in the denominator and question 1 of a tells us to determine the coordinates of the intercepts of f the function with the axes okay so let's start with the y-intercept so for the y-intercept remember we're going to let x equal zero so it'll be y is equal to three over zero minus three minus three okay that gives us negative one because it's, it's three over negative three which is negative one minus three and that gives us negative four so the y intercept then remember the x value is zero but the y value is negative four for the x intercept we're going to let y equals zero Okay, so that means we're now going to have 0 on the left-hand side is equal to 3 over x minus 3, minus 3. So first take over the th negative 3, so it becomes positive 3 on the left-hand side, over 3 to, sorry, 3 over x minus 3. Now you can multiply x minus 3 to both sides, so we get 3 into x minus 3, and on the right-hand side it will cancel. And now you just have to solve for x. So firstly, we're going to distribute the 3 to the x minus 3. So it gets it becomes 3x minus 9 equals 3. And now we can take over the 9 so that we get 3x is equal to 12. Therefore, x equals 4. So our x coordinate now is 4 and 0. Okay, let me make that look more like a 0, not a 6. All right, so we've got 4 and 0. So we've answered question one. We have our two coordinates with the intercepts of, the F, of F with the axes. And question two is to draw a neat and clearly labeled graph of Y equals F of X. Okay, so before we do that, let's just have a look at the structure. So remember that your constant of the hyperbola is equal, that is equal to your horizontal asymptote. All right, and then your denominator, I'm going to use a different color, which is x minus 3, will be the opposite sign. But what we're actually doing is you're saying x minus 3 equals 0. So therefore, x equals 3. And that'll be your vertical asymptote. All right. So using the two asymptotes, and the two intercepts of the axes that you've already worked out, we can then sketch the graph. All right, so firstly, I always um, tell you that when you're sketching a hyperbola, you always start with the asymptotes. Okay, so we've got a positive asymptote, a vertical asymptote going through x is equal to 3. Label that as x is equal to 3. We've got a negative y asymptote, in other words, a horizontal asymptote, going through 
y is equal to negative 3. So label that as well. So that's going through 3. That's going through negative 3. But we must label y equals negative 3. And then we put our intercepts. So we worked out that our x-intercept was at positive 4 and 0. And we worked out that our y-intercept was at, neg at 0 and negative 4. Okay. And then from there, because you know that it's a positive hyperbola, remember the numerator was positive 3, so that means it's a positive hyperbola, that the graph will be roughly in the top right and bottom left of your diagram, okay, so you, of your um, Cartesian plane. So we can start very close to the x asymptote or the vertical asymptote, go through your x-intercept and down and approach your horizontal asymptote. And then we do the same on the left-hand side. We start close to the asymptote, but below the asymptote. And through our x, our y-intercept, and down. Okay, and then don't forget as well to label your graph, especially here because you're going to draw another graph on top of it. All right, so that is the graph of f. Um, and it says label it. Clearly labeled graph of y equals f of x. Question B. On the same set of axes, draw a neat and clearly labeled graph of y equals g of x equals x over 3 plus 3. Okay, so now, this is a straight line graph because the, the variable now is in the numerator. So, you can either use dual intercept method or the gradient intercept method to sketch out. I think the easiest is the gradient intercept method because if we start at positive 3, okay, that is your y-intercept. Alright, so at positive 3 will be your y-intercept and then from positive 3, we can see that the gradient is 1 over 3. So that means we're going to go up 1 unit, so effectively to 4. And we're going to go 3 units across. So our graph's going to go through that point. Okay, but we also need to work out what is the x-intercept. So for the x-intercept, you're going to let y equals 0. So if 0 equals x over 3 plus 3, then that means negative 3 equals x over 3. So therefore, x equals negative 9. And it's just a sketch. You don't have to measure it. Okay, just estimate it. So negative 9 is around there, which means that now we can join our points and our straight line there is g, which is drawn. Okay, so you get a mark there for both graphs. You get a mark for your intercepts. You get a mark for the shape. And in the case of the hyperbola, you also get a mark for the asymptotes. Question 3. Simplify fully without using a calculator and showing all your working. Okay, what's important for you to realize is that in all of these trig ratios, we start off with the acute angle, which means that actually this is a negative angle. All right, so it might help you, well, it will help you, to factorize each of them to start with and take a negative out. Okay, so the sun actually becomes minus 180 degrees minus alpha. Then the sine alpha minus 90 becomes sine negative 90 minus alpha. Then in the denominator, we can take out a negative there as well. So we get cos negative 90 degrees plus alpha. And then for the last one, cos minus alpha minus 180, we take out a negative so that we have 180 plus alpha. All right, and then now you're going to, before you reduce, you're going to apply your negative angle rules. Okay, so that means that for the sine at the top, that's going to become negative sine 180 minus alpha. And that'll put that in the square bracket so you don't mix up your, your signs. Then in the second one, sine of negative 90 minus alpha becomes negative sine 90 minus alpha. Then in the denominator, that cos becomes negative cos, sorry, positive cos, remember with cos, the, the graph is symmetrical about the y-axis, so cos of a negative angle is the same as cos of that positive angle, so that actually just becomes cos of 90 plus theta, plus alpha, okay, then in your last bracket, also cos, so we can disregard the negative there, and we end up with cos 180 plus alpha, all right, you can leave out this step, the second step that I've shown, um, but it just helps you to understand the, the signs of all of your um, ratios. Okay, so now let's, let's use the reduction. So for sine 180 minus alpha, that's quadrant 2, sine is positive, but there's already a negative 
before the sine. So that actually gives us negative sine alpha. Then for the next one, sine 90 minus alpha is cos of alpha. Times the negative that's already there gives us negative cos of alpha. And then in the denominator, cos of 90 plus alpha gives us negative sine alpha. Be careful of that one. That's one of the exceptions with your 90 plus and minus reductions. So that gives us negative sine alpha. And then lastly, cos 180 plus alpha is in quadrant 3. And cos is negative in quadrant 3. So it's negative cos alpha. Okay. So all of these ratios now are negative, And you can see that the negatives then cancel out. The sine alpha cancels with the sine alpha. The cos alpha cancels with the cos alpha. So that our final answer is 1. Question B, sine 210 minus tan 120 times cos 330. So here you need to use reduction because all of these angles are not acute. All right, so the idea here is to simplify them. And remember, they've told you without a calculator, which tells you that you're using special angles, especially when it's numerical like this one. Okay, so sine 210, that is in quadrant uh, 3, where we're going to say sine 180 plus. Okay, so it becomes sine, and again, this step you don't need to show, becomes 180 plus 30 degrees. Tan 120, that's in quadrant 2, so that becomes tan 180 minus 60. And then cos 330 is in quadrant 4. So that'll be cos of 360 minus 30 degrees. Okay, and now you apply your reduction. So for the first one, sine 180 plus 30 is in quadrant 3. Sine is negative in quadrant 3, so that becomes negative sine 30. This step you must show. All right, and then for the second one, put the minus there. I'm circling this minus in, in red so that you see the difference. But now tan 180 minus 60 is in quadrant 2 where tan is negative. So you're going to show that as a negative tan of 60 degrees. And lastly, cos 360 minus 30 is in quadrant 4. Cos is positive in quadrant 4. So that'll just be positive cos of 30. All right, so now in the next step, you can replace with your spatial angles. And at the same time, distribute those two negatives into the tan bracket. So negative sine 30 is negative a half. And then the two negatives become positive tan 60 is root 3 over 1 and cos 30 is root 3 over 2. I'm sure you all knew that off by heart because you've all learned your special angles. And you then simplify. So minus a half, multiply the second bracket, gives you positive 3 because remember root 3 times root 3 is positive 3 over 2. So that's minus a half plus 1 and a half which gives us 1. Okay, and if you can't do that, then you can give the credit to Cassio for doing it for you. Question 4. Given sine 40 is equal to t, express each of the following expressions in terms of t showing all working. Okay, so the idea here is to try and reduce all of the expressions to sine 40. Okay, so sometimes it happens automatically with reduction, but other times you have to do a little bit of a manip manipulation with the diagram. Okay, so let's start with, with reduction here. So if we deal with cos of 130, Okay, now cos of 130 is in quadrant 2, and in quadrant 2, we're going to use 180 minus. Okay, so that becomes cos of 180 minus 50 degrees, which equals cos of negative cos of 50 degrees, because it's in quadrant 2, and cos is negative in quadrant 2. Okay, but we want sine of 40, so remember your 90 minus theta and 90 plus theta rules. So basically what that means is that any co-function ratio, so sine and cos, if their angles are complements to one another, then they're equal. So cos of 50 actually equals sine of 40. All right, so you write that and show that. And then once we've got the negative sine 40, that means that because sine 40 is t, this answer will be negative t. All right, then number B, cos 320 degrees. You'll notice this is for more marks, okay, and you'll see why. So 320 is in quadrant 4. So we would reduce this by saying 360 degrees minus 40 degrees. So we have our 40. Remember, we're looking for sine of 40 equals t. We've got the 40. But cos 360 minus 40 
gives us cos of 40. But we want sine of 40. So because we've got the same angle, the right angle, we can then draw a little diagram. We know it's going to be quadrant 1 because the angle is given as 40 degrees, which is acute. And because it's sine 40 equals t, if you look back up here, we can express t, which is the ratio, as a fraction. All right, so it's t over 1, which still equals t. And remember, your ratio for sine is y over r. So that means that the y value is t and the r value is 1. And then using Pythag, x squared equals r squared minus y squared. So x squared equals 1 squared minus t squared. And then square root both sides, x equals positive 1 minus t squared. Must be positive because we're in quadrant 1. Okay, so cos of 40 degrees is x over r. So that means that in this case, the x value is root 1 minus t squared. And that is over r, which is 1. So your final answer then is root 1 minus t squared. Okay, section B, given h of x equals mx plus c, so we've got a straight line, and we've got j of x equals a over x minus p plus q, and they tell us that h and j intersect at 0 and 8. Now, that 0 is a clue, because if you're ever given 0 in a coordinate, it means it's an intercept, and if the x value is 0, that means it's a y-intercept. So we know that this point is 0 and 8, okay? And then the second point of intersection is given as 6 and 5. So we know that that point is 6 and 5. Right, so the equations of the asymptotes are y equals 6. So this, this line here is y equals 6. And x equals 2. So that's this dotted line there. Write this information onto your diagram. All right, so that helps you answer the questions. All right, so the question is determine the equation of y equals h of x and y equals j of x, showing all working. All right, so I'm going to start with the straight line. Now, we already know that the y-intercept is 8. So we can start off with our straight line as y equals mx plus 8. Okay, because remember that c is your y-intercept. So into this graph, we can now substitute the point 6 and 5. It's important to realize you can't substitute 0 and 8. Okay, because if 0 is your x value, it's going to 0 out your gradient, and we need to solve for m. All right, so substitute 6 and 5 so that y is equal to 5 into 6 equals 6m plus 8. So that means m is equal to negative a half. Okay, if we take over the 8, we get 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And then negative 3 divided by 6 is negative a half. All right, so therefore the equation of h, which is our straight line, is equal to the gradient mx, which is a half x plus 8, which is our straight line. All right. Now, for the hyperbola, because they've given us the asymptotes, we already know that the denominator, because the, the vertical asymptote is x equals positive 2, that means our denominator will be x minus 2. And we know that the horizontal asymptote is y equals 6, so our, um, our constant will be positive 6. So we can start there. So y equals a, we don't know a, over x minus 2 plus 6. All right, and so now we substitute a point. So you can choose either of these two points. So the easiest one, obviously, is where one of the values are 0. Okay, but it doesn't matter. So if we subs 0 and 8 into the equation, then 8 is our y value. A we're looking for. X is 0 minus 2 plus 6. So we now have to solve for a. Sorry, my a looks a little bit like a 9, so I'm going to replace it. Right, now it looks more like an a. Okay, so if we take over the 6, we get 8 minus 6 is 2, is equal to a over negative 2, that's 0 minus 2. And then multiply the negative 2 to both sides, and we get an a value of negative 4. Okay, so that's all we need. That means our equation of j of x is equal to negative 4, our a value, over x minus 2 plus 6. Question 6a, given circle center O, use the diagram to prove the theorem. Oh, a theorem, so that you've learned this then, um, and you can do it straight out of your book. So this is known as bookwork. In other words, it's theory that you have to learn 
directly. So I'm not going to do the proof of the theorem here in this walkthrough. You can look directly back in your textbook or your exercise books to find the proof for the theorem that states that the angle subtended by an arc at the center is double the size of the angle subtended by that same arc at the circumference. Happy days. Alright, so question B. In the figure, O is the center of the circle and PT is equal to PR. They've already uh, labeled that for us. There's the equal marks for PT and PR. And they've said let R1 equal Y, which they haven't put on the diagram. So put it in. And they've said that O1 equals X. So question 1 is express P1. So we're now looking for this angle over here, P1 in terms of x okay so look at what p1 is p1 is two things here okay firstly p1 is an angle at the circle that is subtended by arc qr and arc qr also subtends x at the center of the circle so there's a relationship there all right so straight away we can then say that p1 is equal to x over 2 and the reason angle at center equals twice the angle at the circumference. Alright, so write that information in. That's x over 2. Alright, so then question 2, express x in terms of y. So now you've got to make another um, relationship between some of the x values that you have in your diagram and the y values that you have. So if you have a look at the triangle and look for other information that they haven't used yet, and the fact of, of the matter is that we haven't used that PR and PT are equal. That's an isosceles triangle. Okay, so that means that if R1 is equal to Y, which they've told us, that T also equals Y. Okay, so start off by saying that we know R1 is equal to Y, but then that means that T is also equal to Y, and the reason is isosceles triangle, and the isosceles triangle is PRT. Okay, and then the other conclusion that we can make is that x over 2, P1, is an exterior angle of triangle PRT. So that means x over 2 must equal y plus y. All right, so x over 2 equals y plus y, and your reason is exterior angle of triangle PRT. Okay, and now you just simplify. So x over 2 equals 2y. And when they say express x in terms of y, they then want you to have your answer saying x equals 4y. All right, so multiply both sides by 2, then we get x equals 4y. Okay, question 7a, the identity. Prove that 8 over sine squared x minus 4 over 1 minus cos x equals 4 over 1 plus cos x. Okay, so we're going to deal with the left-hand side here because it's more complicated to work with. And try and look at the right-hand side and see what you have to eliminate. So on the right-hand side, the only trig ratios you have is cos x. Whereas on the left-hand side, we've got a sine squared x. Okay, so get rid of that sine squared x by using your squares identities. Okay, so sine squared x actually becomes 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, minus 4 over 1 minus cos x. Now, we need to... Um, simplify these two fractions by getting an LCD. But always before you get an LCD, factorize your denominators. So the 8 over 1 minus cos squared x becomes 1 minus cos x into 1 plus cos x. Minus 4 over 1 minus cos x. Okay, so now you have enough for an LCD. So your LCD is 1 minus cos x into 1 plus cos x. Alright, so the 8 stays the same because the LCD is already the same as what it was underneath 8. But the 4, the second fraction is missing a 1 plus cos x in the numerator. So it should be minus 4 into 1 plus cos x. Alright, so at this point, please do not cancel the 1 plus cos x. You may not do that because of the negative there. Alright, so what you need to do here is multiply out the numerator. So you, be, you, you end up getting 8 minus 4 minus 4 cos x. Alright, and that's over 
1 minus cos x into 1 plus cos x. Okay, so now I'm going to just make this a little bit smaller. In the numerator, we can simplify 8 minus 4 is 4. Then we've got 4 minus 4 cos x. So there's a common 4. We can take out that 4 and we're left with 1 minus cos x at the top. And at the bottom, we've got 1 minus cos x into 1 plus cos x. Now those two 1 minus cos x brackets can cancel. Okay, so once you've cancelled those, you then end up with 4 over 1 plus cos x. And then don't forget to conclude that's equal to the right-hand side. All right, question B was a problem-solving question. Okay, so let's analyze it. We've got cos 1 plus cos 2 plus cos 3 plus, then the dot, dot, dot means that it continues in that pattern all the way up to cos 177 plus cos 178 plus cos 179 plus cos 180 degrees. Okay, so the cos 1 plus the cos 2 Okay, cos 2 degrees plus cos 3 degrees. We can't do anything to that. Okay, but we know that if we look at the cos 177, that is cos 180 minus 3 gives us 177. And then the cos 178, so that cos 178 gives us plus cos into 180 minus 2. Okay, and then the and then so on. So then the cos one seven nine um, becomes plus cos one eighty minus one, and then lastly the cos one eighty is just cos one eighty. Okay, I'm gonna fit it in there. All right. So if you had to now expand this, we know that the first the first part's gonna stay the same. So I'm gonna copy that, but then the second part. Cos 180 minus 3, that's in quadrant 2 where cos is negative. So that becomes negative cos of 3 degrees. And then cos 180 minus 2, also in quadrant 2, so that becomes negative cos of 2, of 2 degrees. And then cos 180 minus 1 becomes negative cos 1. Also because it's in quadrant 2. And then cos 180 stays the same because there's no reduction there. Okay, so what you need to understand now is that all of these causes are going to eliminate. So cos 1 over here will eliminate with that negative cos 1. Cos 2 with negative cos 2. Cos 3 with negative cos 3. Okay, all the way up to cos 90. Okay, so effectively that's equal to 0 plus 0 plus 0. The cos 1 minus cos 1, your two outer ones. Cos 2 minus cos 2 is 0. Cos 3 minus cos 3 is 0. All the way to cos 89 minus cos 89, which is 0. Right, so effectively you have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 all the way until cos 89 and cos negative 89. Okay, but cos 90, which is directly in the middle between cos 1 and 180 we will still have remember we we can't we're not going to reduce that because it's a it's already a special angle plus cos 180 and we know that these all equal to 0 but cos 90 is also equal to 0 but cos 180 is equal to negative 1 okay so this is the only ratio actually that you're working out everything else from cos 1, cos negative 1, cos 2, cos negative 2, all the way to cos 89, cos negative 89, cancel out. Cos of 90 is equal to 0, and then cos 180 on its own is equal to negative 1.